Welcome back to theCUBE's continuous coverage of AWS reInvent 2021. My name is Dave Vellante, and we are running one of the industry's most <laughs> important and largest hybrid tech events of the year. Hybrid as in physical, not a lot of that going on this year, but we're here with the AWS ecosystem, AWS, and special thanks to AMD for supporting this year's editorial coverage of the event. We've got two live sets, two remote studios, more than a hundred guests on the program. We're going really deep as we enter the next decade of cloud innovation. We're super excited to be joined by Danny Allen, who's the chief technology officer at Veeam, and James Kirshner, who's the engineering director for Amazon S3. Guys, great to see you. Great to see you as well, Dave. Thanks for having me. So, you're very, so let's kick things off. Veeam and AWS, you guys have been partnering for a long time. Danny, where's the focus at this point in time what are customers telling you they want you to solve for? And then maybe James, you can weigh in on the problems that customers are facing and the opportunities that they, they see ahead. But Danny, why don't you start us off? Sure, so we hear from our customers a lot that they certainly want the solutions that Veeam is bringing to market in terms of data protection. But one of the things that we're hearing is they want to move to cloud. <clears throat> and so there's a number of capabilities that they're asking us for help with. Things like S3, things like EC2 and our yeah. And so over the last, I'll say four or five years, we've been doing more and more together with AWS in, in I'll say two big categories. One is how do we help them send their data into the cloud? And we've done that in a very significant way. We support obviously tiering data into S3, but not just S3, we support S3 and S3 Glacier and S3 Glacier Deep Archive. And more importantly than ever, we do it with immutability because customers are asking for security. So a big category of what we're working on is making sure that we can store data and we can do it securely. Second big category that we get asked about is help us to protect the cloud native workloads. So they have workloads running in EC2 and RDS and EFS and EKS and all these different services. And they want cloud native data protection. So we're very focused on solving those problems for our customers. You know, James, it's interesting. I, 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 was, um, I was out at the, the 15th anniversary of S3 uh, in Seattle in September. I was talking to May Lai. Remember we used to talk about gigabytes and terabytes, but things are, have changed quite dramatically, haven't they? Well, what's your take on this topic? Well, they sure have. We've seen exponential growth of data worldwide, and that's made managing backups more difficult than ever before. Uh, we're seeing traditional methods like tape libraries, and secondary sites fall behind. And many organizations are moving more and more of their workloads to the cloud. And they're extending backup targets to the cloud as well. AWS offers the most storage services, data transfer methods and networking options with unmatched durability, security and affordability. And customers who are moving their Veeam backups to AWS, they get all those benefits um, with a cost-effective offsite storage platform, providing physical separation from on-premises primary data with pay-as-you-go economics, no upfront fees or capital investments and near zero overhead to manage. AWS and APM partners like Veeam are helping to build secure, efficient, cost-effective backup and restore solutions using the products you know and trust with the scale and reliability of the AWS cloud. So thank you for that. So Danny, I remember I was, Way back in the old days, it was a Veeam on physical event. <laughs> and I remember kicking around and, and seeing this company called Kasten. I was really interested. I'm like, you're protecting containers, aren't they ephemeral? And they started, we started to sort of chit chat about how that's going to change and what their vision was. Well, back in 2020, you purchased Kasten, you formed the, you know, the Veeam KBU, the Kubernetes business unit. What was the rationale behind that acquisition? And then James, I'm going to get you to to talk a little bit about modern apps, but Danny, start with the rationale behind uh, the Kasten acquisition. Well, one of the things that we certainly believe is that the next generation of infrastructure is going to be based on containers. And there's a whole number of reasons for that. Things like scalability and portability, and there's a number of significant value adds. So back in October of last year in, in 2020, as you mentioned, we acquired Kasten. And since that time, we've been working through Kasten and, and from Veeam to add more capabilities and services around AWS. For example, um, we supported the bottle rocket launch they just did and actually uh, EKS anywhere. And so we're very focused on making sure that our customers can protect their data, no matter whether it's a Kubernetes cluster, whether it's on-premises in a data center, or if it's running up in the cloud in EC2, we give this consistent data management experience and including, of course, the next generation of infrastructure that we believe will be based on containers. 
Yeah, you know, James, I, I, I've always been you know, noted to, to our audience that hey, AWS, they provide you know, rich set of primitives and, and APIs uh, that, that ISVs like Veeam can take advantage of. But I wonder if you could talk about you know, your perspective, maybe what you're seeing in, in the ecosystem, maybe comment on what Veeam's doing, specifically you know, containers, app modernization in the cloud, the evolution of S3 to support all these trends. Yeah, well, it's been great to see Veeam expand support for more and more AWS services to help joint customers protect their data, especially since Veeam stores their data in, AWS, in Amazon S3 storage classes. And over the last 15 years, S3 has helped companies around the world optimize their work. So yeah, I'd be happy to share some uh, insights into that with you today. When you think about uh, S3, um, well, you can find virtually every use case across all industries running on S3. That ranges from backup to IO sensor data to machine learning models, the list goes on and on. And one of the reasons is because S3 provides industry leading scalability, availability, durability, security, and performance. And those are the characteristics customers want. To give you some examples, S3 stores exabytes of data across millions of hard drives, trillions of objects around the world and regularly peaks at millions of requests per second. S3 can process in a single region over 60 terabits a second. So in summary, it's a very powerful storage offering. Yeah, indeed. So you guys are always talking about, you know, working backwards, the customer centricity. I think, I think frankly, I think AWS has sort of changed the culture of the entire industry. So let's talk about customers. Dan, do you have an example of a joint customer, maybe how you're partnering with AWS to try to address some of the challenges in data protection. Um, what, are, what are customers seeing today? Well, we're certainly seeing that migration towards the cloud as, as James alluded to, Dave. And actually, if we're talking about Kubernetes, actually, there's a customer that I know of right now, Lidos. They're a Fortune 500 information technology company. They deal in the engineering and, and technology services space and, and focus on highly regulated industries, it's things like defense and intelligence and the civil space and healthcare and these very regulated industries. Anyway, they were they decided to make a big investment in um, continuous integration, continuous development. There's a, a segment of the industry called portable DevSecOps. And they wanted to build infrastructure as code that they could deploy services, not in days or weeks or months, but they literally wanted to deploy their services in hours. And so they came to us and with casting K10 actually around Kubernetes, they created a service that could enable them to do that. So they could be fully compliant and they could deliver the services in, like I say, um, hours, not, not days or months. And they did that all while delivering the same security that they need in a cost effective way. So it's been a great partnership. And that's just one example. We see these all the time, customers who want to combine the power of Kubernetes with the scale of the cloud from AWS with the data protection that comes from Veeam. Yeah, so James, you, you, you know, AWS, you don't get dinner if you don't have a customer example. So maybe, maybe you could share one with us. Yeah, we, we do love working backwards from customers. And Danny, I loved hearing that story. Um, one customer leveraging Veeam on AWS is Merits. Merits provides business performance solutions that connect people to results, ensuring brands deliver on their customer promises and drive growth. Recently, Merit's moved over a thousand VMs and petabytes of data into AWS using Veeam. Veeam backup for AWS enables Merit's to protect their Amazon EC2 instances with the backup of the data in Amazon S3 for high available cost-effective long-term storage. You know, uh, one of the hallmarks of cloud is strong ecosystem. I see a lot of Companies in, you know, so they're their own version of cloud. I always ask, well, what's a partner ecosystem look like? Because that is, you know, a fundamental requirement in my view, anyway, an attribute. But and so a big part of that, Danny, is channel partners. And you have a hundred percent channel model. And I wonder if we could talk about your strategy in that regard. Why is it important to be all channel? How do consulting partners fit into the strategy? And then, Jay's, I'm going to ask you, what's the fit with the AWS ecosystem? But Danny, let's start with you. Sure, so one of the things that we've learned, we're 15 years old as well. Actually, I think we're about two months older or younger, I should say, than AWS. I think their birthday was in August, ours was in October. But um, over that 15 years, we've learned that, that our customers enjoy the services and support and expertise that comes from the channel. And so we've always been 
100% channel company. And so one of the things that we've done with AWS is to make sure that our customers can purchase both how and when they want through the AWS marketplace. They have a program called uh, Consulting Partners um, Private Agreements or, or CPPO, I think is, is what it's known as. And that allows our customers to consume um, through the channel, but with the terms and bill that they associate with AWS. And so it's a new route to market for us, but we continue to even partner with AWS in the channel programs as well. Yeah, the marketplace is, is really impressive, James. I wonder if you could maybe hit that a little bit. Yeah, I think Danny said it well, AWS marketplace is a sales channel for ISVs and consulting partners. It lets them sell their solutions to AWS customers. And we focus on making it really easy for customers to find, buy, deploy, manage their software solutions, including software as a service in just a matter of minutes. You know, Danny, you mentioned you're 15 years old. The first time I've, I mean, you're, the name Veeam, the brilliance of tying it to, to virtualization and VMware. I was at a, a VMUG when I first met you guys and saw your ascendancy tied to, to virtualization. And now you're obviously you know, leaning heavily into the cloud. And you, got, you and I have talked a lot about the difference between just wrapping your stack in a, in a container and hosting it in the cloud versus actually taking advantage of cloud native services to drive further innovation. So my question to you is, where does Veeam fit on that spectrum? And specifically, what cloud native services are you leveraging on AWS? And maybe what have been some outcomes of those efforts, if in fact, that's what you're doing? And then James, I have a follow-up for you. Sure, so the, the outcomes clearly are just more success, more scale, more security, all the things that James was alluding to, that's true for Veeam, it's true for our customers. And so if you look at the cloud native capabilities that we protect today, Certainly it began with EC2. So we run things in the cloud in EC2 and we wanted to protect that, but we've gone well beyond that today. We protect RDS, we protect EFS, Elastic File Services. We talked about EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Services, ECS. Um, so there's a number of these different services that we protect and we're going to continue to expand on that. But the, the interesting thing is in all of these, uh, Dave, when we do data protection, we're sending it to S3 and we're doing all of that management and tiering and security that our customers know and love and expect from Veeam. And so you'll see, you'll continue to see these types of capabilities coming from Veeam as we go forward. Thank you for that. So James, as you know, we know S3, the very first service offered in 2006 on the AWS cloud. Uh, as I said, the cube was out in Seattle September. It was a great, you know, little, little semi-hybrid event. Um, and, but so over the decade and a half, you've really expanded the offerings quite dramatically, including a number of, you got on-premises services, things like Outpost, you got other services with wintry names. How have you seen partners take advantage of those services? Is there anything you, you can highlight maybe that Veeam is doing that's notable? What can you share? Yeah, I think you're right to call out that growth. We have a very broad and rich set of features and services, and we keep growing that uh, almost every day. There's a new release coming out, so it can be hard to keep up with. Um, and Veeam has really been listening and innovating to support our joint customers. I think Danny uh, called out a number of the ways in which they've expanded their support. Uh, I, you know, within Amazon S3, I want to call out their support for our infrequent access, infrequent access one zone, Glacier and Glacier Deep Archive storage classes. And they also support other AWS storage services like AWS Outposts, uh, AWS Storage Gateway, AWS Snowball Edge and the, the cold themed storage offerings. Um, so absolutely a broad set of support there. Yeah, there's those, uh, those, the winter is coming. Um, okay, great guys, we're going to leave it there. Danny, James, thanks so much for coming to theCUBE. Really good to see you guys. Good to see you Thanks. as well, thank you. All right, you're watching- Thanks for the, having us. You're very welcome. You're watching theCUBE's coverage of 2021 AWS reInvent. Keep it right there for more action on theCUBE, your leader in hybrid tech event coverage. Right back.